i make most of this uh, time of yours and uh, i hope i give some value to you if not everything but at least whatever little experience i have i, I hope i give that value to you okay i'm quickly sharing my screen Let me know if you guys are able to see my screen. Okay. Looks good. Okay, so this is about me. Uh, as Mark mentioned, so I did have my own introduction page. So this is about me. I work as an enterprise agile coach at Fractal Analytics. I help organizations grow and, and be more agile by focusing on the human-centric factors of agile coaching and providing them with the psychological safety uh, within teams and within organization and empowering teams, leaders, and executives to realize their true potential. And, and apart from this, this is like my uh, full-time day job. Uh, apart from this, I also have a small agile community of practice called as Agile Coaching Roundtable. And uh, I also uh, have a YouTube channel and this community is uh, run uh, by me and my husband, uh, Vivek, who is uh, also an Agile coach and who has joined us uh, to just hear me today. And we also have a YouTube channel uh, with the same name. And recently we have also started a podcast uh, with the name uh, Podcast by Agile Coaching uh, Roundtable. So if... Uh, you want to anytime just drop in and listen to our podcast uh, episodes uh, with the guest uh, please uh, so, uh, tune into the uh, spotify or uh, apple podcast so that is pretty much about me and with that i'll just uh, start uh, with uh, today's uh, topic as you all know uh, today i'm going to talk about uh, the barriers of coaching uh, so before we begin with uh, what are the barriers, I would just like to uh, give a small uh, in, uh, maybe definition of what coaching uh, is all about and what coaching means to me. So coaching is a powerful tool for professional and personal development that can help individuals achieve their goals and reach their full potential. However, despite its many benefits, there are several barriers that can prevent people from engaging in coaching or receiving the full benefits of uh, coaching. So today I'm going to talk about the barriers of coaching. So first and foremost um, barrier to coaching is undervalue coaching. So what do, what do I mean by undervalue coaching? So in many organizations, it is perceived that coaching is, uh, I mean, not that important because they, there is uh, no awareness of coaching. Since there is no awareness of coaching, some people uh, do not understand the benefits of coaching or may uh, not understand what coaching is all about. They may not see the value in coaching or they may not know how it can help them reach their goals. This lack of awareness prevents people from seeking out coaching and can be a significant barrier to its effectiveness. Since there is lack of awareness, uh, they don't see the benefit of it. And because of which it becomes a barrier uh, to any sorts of coaching. And this entire uh, topic today, I'm going to, uh, since I am an agile coach, I'm going to touch base on uh, agile coaching, uh, not any other coaching, but uh, more focused on agile coaching. So that is the first barrier. That is uh, an undervalue coaching. And why it happens? That is because of lack of awareness. So whenever we go and coach as a uh, coach anyone, be it individual team members or any organization, first thing that we need to understand is just check, test the waters. What is the value of coaching that organization has? And that gives us uh, the initial uh, say uh, tickle or say that, okay, what or how the coaching is perceived in that particular organization. So this becomes a very big barrier. Okay, so moving on. Next coaching barrier is cultural disconnect. So for some organizations or for some cultures, um, coaching is treated as waste of time. 
and for them coaching is only needed when uh, they see the dip in the uh, team's performance that is more or less called as remedial coaching that means you see some problem and you are trying to just fix the remedy they don't see it as a uh, say prevent uh, preventary coaching or maybe uh, preventive action but for them coaching is like a waste of time they don't invest much in coaching because their leadership styles are different they come from different school of leadership and since there is no uh, value to the coaching and their understanding or uh, their culture of coaching is not uh, that much or uh, given importance this again becomes the barrier so in such culture whenever you go and try to uh, coach them they will be straight away turning down they will see you as uh, overhead they will see coaches as overhead just an example i would just like to uh, give a small example since uh, uh, the, there is no such culture i would like to bring in uh, example from a similar setup so uh, i think two days down the line uh, i mean two, uh, two days ago sorry uh, i had a, a mentorship session with one of my mentees and uh, i would not like to name the person obviously uh, because uh, the person is not comfortable uh, sharing the name so, uh, so okay she is uh, appointed as a new agile coach and in one of the uh, organizations or one of the projects or engagements and the brief that was given to her was uh, you have come here as a coach you would be uh, helping uh, multiple teams uh, in coaching them on agile or maybe any framework uh, or for that matter agile ways of working to start with so what happened was her manager gave her the brief that there is this higher um, official or say a, a vp in an organization who decided that for this project uh, say say framework is uh, good to go and uh, that particular uh, team member in the entire engagement they have never ever worked on agile so that was the very first time they were transitioning from waterfall to agile and what happened was uh, so uh, obviously she was a bit baffled because uh, the moment she heard i mean it's a safe framework so she gave her obviously a suggestion saying that first we may want to just go with some uh, a uh, normal or a basic framework and then go to a scaling framework that would become easier for them so the manager uh, told her that you know what uh, we don't have much say, say in this because the manager is a vp and he has he has this vision to bring in like uh, say say framework so i think we need to uh, follow him whatever he says so with this kind of a brief she was uh, and it was very new i mean i think hardly one or two weeks into the project and uh, she was literally confused so she just reached up to me asking for help i mean how do i tackle this situation so i just asked her did you ever speak to your vp so she was she got a bit intimidated because because of the brief that was given to her and since uh, she was going there as a coach and there was already a spc who was already struggling there to make them understand certain things but then because of the uh, vp's vision or that higher officials uh, vision everything that was uh, put forward by a coach or maybe the uh, uh, subject matter expertise in uh, coaching or agile that was turned down maybe not even uh, paid a uh, uh, listening here to it so i just suggested that why not go and speak to uh, your vp and try to find out uh, why he thinks that this this framework is uh, fit for this project or and so on so from that i got to understand that they do not really value the uh, in, uh, value the coaching culture and they don't have that culture uh, at the first place and that is where that hippo things come into the picture that is highest paid person opi opinion would be taken right that's exactly what is uh, happening in this case so that comes because they do not have uh, that coaching culture um, integrated in them or uh, they don't understand the value of uh, coaching so that again is a very big uh, barrier for coaching okay moving on uh, to the next ba uh, barrier is time and resource so what usually happens is uh, this i have seen uh, in many uh, organizations 
since there is no uh, value uh, to the uh, coaching since there is uh, no culture of coaching uh, and there is uh, hardly any importance given to coaching what happens is any uh, person would be treated as coach in an organization for example someone playing say project manager or maybe whatever random person would be picked up and asked to do a coaching since that person is already having uh, or wearing dual hat hats it becomes very difficult for that person uh, to dedicate that time for coaching and also apart from this there is al al always a time uh, ticking uh, and there is a time pressure uh, in this entire scenario so coaches have always given this deadline saying that you know what you have just uh, this project has just started maybe this project um, uh, needs a uh, team to get them uh, up to speed so you may have say one month or maybe two months uh, in your hand to uh, kind of coach them so with such time uh, pressure situation and with uh, people uh, wearing multiple hats and with lot of pressure many many a times coaches say that i do not have a uh, full time uh, dedicated uh, for coaching because i have many other things to say uh, or to cover and another thing is resource uh, when i talk about resources since uh, there is no value uh, in such organizations about coaching what people do is they do coaching only when uh, uh, management feels or when they do coach when uh, when there is a need according to them by the client if the client demands is why they bring in coach if management thinks that coach is required uh, just to settle down or just to show that we are also filling one position they will bring in coach and because of this they will not account for these roles be it coach or maybe scrum master uh, why am i picking a scrum master because scrum master is also a team level coach so they don't cater these roles at the beginning of the engagement so what happens is there is hardly any support from leadership uh, uh, when we say support uh, in the leadership not just uh, leadership even from the hr so for an example if the coach says that you know what for this organization uh, for this team or an engagement we need to plan certain uh, trainings and obviously it requires uh, infra logistics and maybe uh, set up kind of a thing right so that is not provided to coaches so because of these uh, time and resource criticality factors they fail reaching their results or achieving their results so that again becomes a barrier uh, to coaching next is like everyone's favorite resistance of course when we talk about uh, being in you know, when we talk about uh, uh, coaching that means there it requires a lot of shift in uh, the mindset ways of working and uh, the cultural shift right so whenever we uh, talk about coaching someone that means we are just shaking them from their comfort zones and whenever that happens whenever we introduce the change they do not easily accept it so obviously if someone uh, if if you guys know about the kubler ross uh, change curve whenever we ask them to change uh, or we just tell someone you know what from tomorrow say just an example uh, you want uh, you may want to just start going for gym and for that you will have to get up early so someone like me who is like a uh, uh, late riser if someone asks me to get up at uh, say 5 in the morning obviously i will never feel comfortable because that i'm getting uh, going into some uh, out of my comfort zone so whenever we talk about uh, bringing in change so we uh, every human being goes uh, to this change curve according to kubler ross change curve so it starts with shock and denial then we go to anger then we go to bargaining stage then depression and then acceptance so resistance is very common barrier to coaching because we are shaking people from their comfort zones so that change whenever you talk about uh, say uh, we are changing something we want to bring in change lot of trust factor is involved in that people don't trust that easily that is the reason why the, you you see lot of resistance so just uh, a small uh, trivia information that as per science whenever we try to 
uh, build some habit it takes uh, like 21 days to build a habit and if, for it to become a lifestyle it takes three months and that is the reason why you would have generally noticed in any coaching uh, assignment for any coaches they do not commit a longer period of time uh, to bring in that change they say that minimum two to three months is what we are looking at uh, wherein you can start seeing results that is because it takes 21 uh, days to change your habit or cultivate a new habit and it takes three months to make it a lifestyle so that is the reason why there is a lot of resistance that you see if you just an example of whenever you go to any uh, organization or maybe any project and you ask them you know what i'm your coach and i'm here to train you on your ways of working or say agile ways of working and you start training you will see very less participation unless you call them individually or say that this is mandatory you have to attend forget about the team members even the uh, leaders do not attend and in fact team uh, more than the team members leaders don't uh, attend for them it's like it is not required for me to join this session uh, because this coaching is not for me and coaching is a, a weak point and i'm already perfect why do i need to uh, get coaching so that is the reason uh, why you see a lot of resistance and especially from the leadership so resistance is one one of the most common barriers in coaching hey ram i've got a question yes ma'am maybe not so much a question well i'll turn it into a question but have you seen the other barriers being masked so that they really are resistance and i so let me give you an example <laughs> so have you seen people that they're really showing resistance but they're not telling you they're resistant they're telling you i don't have time when they really do have time but they're using that as an excuse to mask resistance yes that's correct uh that is a very big uh a uh, barrier that we see and people mask it and the reason being uh, and especially this happens with the uh, leadership uh, team mark so what happens is uh, when you go to leaders and try to change something as i mentioned since they do not have that culture of uh, uh, coaching right what they treat it as that there is some feedback or there is something wrong with me and acceptance of need of change is something that they are not comfortable with and what they feel is i'm already perfect if i feel that i need a coaching session what am i uh, what message am i going to pass to my team members or my subordinates so this is a very common thing that they say you know what i'm very busy i don't have time uh, for coaching instead of me i can bring in someone i can give you say uh, i'll uh, give you this lead he'll work for you so better you coach that person and not me so this is a common thing that uh, i see because uh, they are not open to learn they are not flexible to learn and they don't want to accept that they need coaching so just real quick i had someone explain to me how they okay. turned the tables on that because they used the excuse of time they didn't have time and their strategy was oh well if you don't have time then you know what I have freed my schedule for the next week and the next weekend. So, you know, anytime after hours you want, anytime on Saturday, Sunday, you tell me when you can meet and I'll be happy to meet with you. And the response was, it was incredible how they actually were able to find time on their schedules once you put, once they put that offer on the table. So yeah, that, that just one it's kind of funny, but um, yeah, it's a creative way to get around that barrier. Yeah, and I think, yes. I think, sorry, I think the most important thing is meeting them where they are. You know, so you need to know that this is the level these guys are, rather than wanting to change them like immediately. Correct, correct. And also, one of the biggest reasons why uh, they mask under timing is fear of unknowns 
not everyone is uh, very uh, i mean welcoming in terms of dealing with unknowns and this fear of unknown literally shakes people sometimes and that is also one of the barriers which is uh, not out in open they or maybe not everyone is able to express that openly and also uh, it requires a lot of trust factor right uh, so someone coming to you and asking uh, you to change so obviously no one will accept just a um, small example that uh, i would like to uh, share over here is so uh, imagine i mean uh, when we were uh, small kids and uh, we used to have this play times in the evening right and uh, used to always play in groups with your uh, group members or your uh, uh, whatever uh, play groups right and you are like say bunch of people and someone comes to you a new boy comes to you and asks you you know what you are um, not playing the game right say you are playing game of cricket someone comes to you and tells you that you know what you are not playing right obviously the first impression of uh, of yours would be who is he to teach us right who is he to tell us what is right and what is not this is our game this is our field this is how we do so this is what happens exactly when we say that um, uh, there is a resistance because that is very uh, that comes naturally to us as human beings i hope i answered that mark Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Yes, thank you, Ramya. Okay, so moving on to the next barrier. Uh, it's sorry, sorry about this. Yeah, next one is one size fits all. So this is something uh, is to do with the uh, coach. right so what happens is when you go and coach if you are not experienced enough or if you don't know uh, better how to deal with people because coaching is more of a psychological according to me and not uh, uh, i mean techniques or maybe tools are something it can be learned on the job but psychological factor is something that we need to uh, have maybe empathy or uh, maybe uh, compassion uh, compassion are the things that we need to have as coaches so what happens is whenever you go uh, say you start your coaching journey and you have uh, say as an agile coach you have started uh, coaching one uh, engagement or maybe one team and you somehow figured out okay this is the approach i want to take up and that worked for you as well and now you move on to some other assignment and what happens is you try to fit in the same approach for new team also so when we try to fit same thing for every other team then obviously we are not going to succeed and that becomes barrier to our coaching so whenever we try to uh, fit only one approach everywhere that shows our inflexibility that means we are not open for new ideas we are not open for uh, being flexible and we are not open to try new things so that is also something and this is also one um, barrier which is usually hidden under the carpet this is something not uh, realized very soon and the sooner we realize this the better results or uh, better effective uh, or the more effective we would be so this is for the coaches i mean people do not understand we cannot have one size fits all solution for every team under the sun every team is unique every team dynamics are different and so should be your approach you should be flexible enough to uh, tweak and change and uh, be uh, trying uh, new things or new approaches to uh, with each team okay moving on to next one is unstructured approach unstructured approach means um, since uh, there is no awareness within the organization already so what happens is uh, these roles as i mentioned are not something um, which are realized early on 
so what happens is now there is a need in this project at this juncture is is when we are going to just go there and find out a coach and just bring bring that coach and give them some deadline saying that you know what this is what you have to do this is the timeline we don't have much time and do it so that is the uh, place where coaches go wrong they do not set up uh, some process to it though there is time criticality and that would always happen in uh, in especially the uh, world or maybe fast moving uh, uh, scenario time criticality is going to happen but that that does not mean that you should not have a structured approach you need to talk to people understand the people set up the common goal and most of the coaches what they do is they try to treat the symptoms and not the root causes so when you are trying to put a bandage to, to the uh, symptoms obviously you are trying to just cover the surface level issues but not treating the root cause so for that you will have to have a structured approach find out the root cause find dig, dig, dig to the level wherein you understand what is the root cause of the problem and also what another thing i see uh, is missing in their approach is they do not follow up they do not follow up with the coaches as in how they are doing or whether did they improve even 1% from the previous uh, state and if yes they don't even acknowledge that so lack of acknowledgement treating the uh, root cause uh, not treating the root cause and just treating the uh, uh, symptoms are some of the reasons uh, why we have un unstructured approaches and that again becomes the uh, barrier to coaching okay and the next one is the experience this is again something to do with the uh, coach so what happens is uh, that again i mean we are not blaming coaches over here but also it uh, it has to do more more with the uh, culture that organization have has right so whenever you do this uh, uh, go there as a coach you need to bring in lot of experience and lot of maturity as a coach you cannot go there and just say that i just figure out uh, though i don't have experience maybe i'll go there and figure out and what happens is even in organization this i have seen personally that they will pick any random person and they'll ask you know what you will play a coach's role and they, they will hire any person without uh, noticing uh, whether that person has previously play, played a role of coach or not whether that person has experience uh, uh, in coaching or not or uh, they will ask maybe someone with uh, like one or two years of total experience not the uh, relevant experience total experience as one or uh, two exp uh, two years ask them to coach team members so what happens is when you treat coaching as like a entry level job and this we have seen uh, with lot of scrum masters when they treat these roles as an entry level uh, roles is what you see lot of problems we need to have certain uh, gravitas and certain uh, experience wherein we we should be able to become that leader and the main problem is people don't treat coaches or coaching jobs as a leadership role and this is where they lack skills so inexperience is one of the biggest um, uh, reasons of why there is a, that becomes a barrier in uh, coaching so now we have seen that what all are the barriers of coaching the last point that i would cover i would like to cover over here is how do we overcome these uh, barriers so first is create an awareness on coaching i mean i cannot emphasize the uh, importance of creating the awareness of coaching but it is very very necessary whenever you go to any organization for coaching you have to create that awareness you have to be that uh, 
um, advocate of coaching and tell them that this is what uh, it is. This is uh, why uh, we need coaches. The, what is the importance? What is the benefit? So creating an awareness on coaching is very, very important. So whenever you go to any organization or any teams for coaching, this should be your first step. No matter how experienced the team is in terms of, uh, uh, say, in, uh, in agile context, for example, you're going there as an agile coach, no matter how experienced your team is in terms of agile implementation, you have to bring everyone onto the same page. So, and that page should be yours. I mean, because you would be working there as a coach, you need to bring them uh, on the same page and to on a common goal. So create, create, uh, creating awareness on coaching is very important. Second is leadership by involve your leadership at a very early level the sooner you involve your leadership the the better or the more effective your coaching would be you cannot say that i am going there alone and i am just going to shake up things that will never happen you need leadership support and that change or the culture that we are talking about that has to be driven from the leadership so it has to be top-down approach. You have to have that leadership support for you when you go there, and especially for the uh, in the environment where there is no uh, coaching culture, at least for that environment, leadership buy-in is very important. Have an early engagement with the leadership. Third is dedicated time and resource for coaching. Again, creating an awareness who take care of this. You need to go there, dedicate your time, resources, energy for coaching. You cannot say that uh, you are uh, wearing, say, multiple hats, two to three hats, and then doing coaching as a part-time thing. Sure, that could happen. But for the teams or engagements where they are at a very beginner level, they need a lot of your time and dedication uh, for coaching. So it's just like parenting. So when uh, we are uh, kids, we dedicate a lot of time to them. All our lives are revolving around the kid, right? But then as they move ahead uh, or as they grow, they become teenager, You, your involvement is very minimal. And when they become adult, you hardly uh, coach them anything. You, I mean, what you do is you just be there for them whenever uh, they need support or when, whenever um, they need your help. They, you, but then you don't uh, keep a tab on them or uh, maybe uh, be naggy about them the way you were uh, when they were kids. So there's a difference uh, between how much time or how much of coaching is required. That depends upon at what level your team is or your uh, leadership is. So dedicate that time according to the need of the hour. Second is maximize the coaching that already exists. And this is very important. Whenever we uh, say that we want to coach someone, right? First, obviously, when you go there, you cannot directly start changing things from the day one itself. First, you'll have to understand uh, their current ways of working. First, you'll have to understand what, how, uh, how why they are doing what they are doing and how each team member is. And See what level of coaching that is already existing within the team or if there is no uh, coaching uh, exists in the team, look beyond the teams, look within the BU or maybe within the organization. See if there is any single person who is already there as a coach. Try to bring in people together, create some, uh, say, process or maybe make use of existing coaches or maybe make Leave, uh, leverage the existing people who has some knowledge and experience of coaching. Make use of that. See if there is anything catered for coaching in the existing uh, setup. And that should be the starting point. First, understand their current state. See why they are doing what they're doing, how far they have achieved, and is there any uh, presence of coaching already? If yes, then make use of it. Leverage that. Obviously, set goals and focus. You cannot just coach for indefinite time, right? You need to set up some goal. You want to have some outcomes. You want to measure that outcomes uh, for your teams, right? So whenever 
you go there as a coach you want to set up some goals and focus on those goals not necessary that you may have like 10 goals right that you you may want to say uh, improve uh, help your team improve their uh, collaboration or maybe you want if your team members are like very much uh, burnt out you may want to help on that you uh, you may want to help on say stakeholder um, collaboration there could be many uh, uh, problem areas or many goals that you may want to set but prioritizing uh, your goals and focusing on one goal at a time is very important set up one goal just try to uh, work towards it collaborate with your coach and try to uh, achieve that goal and then move on to the next and as i mentioned treat root cause and not symptoms if you treat your uh, root causes, symptoms will already be taken care of. So as a coach, this is very important for us to treat the root cause and not the symptom. Last but not the least, have follow-ups and recognition. For have a for, Having a follow-up um, meeting or a session is very important just to see how your coach is doing or how your team is doing is there any improvement if yes then recognize that improvement do inspect and adapt here is where inspect and adapt comes into picture do recognize your team members celebrate their wins celebrate their failures it's okay you may not see the results up front it is just it's a long term engagement it's not something that you will see today you have coached them and tomorrow you will see the results having that follow ups recognizing their efforts recognizing the improvements and celebrating their wins and failures is very important you need to provide that psychological safety to your team members as a coach that's it from my end to just summarize what we have learned we talked about barriers of coaching, that is undervalue coaching, cultural disconnect, time and resources, resistance, one size fits all, unstructured approach, inexperience, and then overcome barriers. I think, Mark, uh, we are good to take any questions, uh, anyone has Yeah, so any first of all, I just want to say thanks. That was awesome, Ramya. Thank you very much. We do have Thank one you. question that I see in the chat here that's been around for uh, for a little while, so I want to get to it. Hopefully, it won't be too deep. But Karen asks, what would the next steps have been? So you were talking about this earlier on. What would the next steps have been for the coach and the VP who wanted safe? We all find ourselves in less than ideal situations like this. And what role do you see for coaching agreements? Could they have helped in this scenario? How realistic are coaching agreements for agile coaching? And if not, how to best normalize coaching and have it accepted? So there's several questions all bundled into there, and I can help you unpack that if you sure. want to. Sure, sure. Uh, so as a next step, what I had suggested my mentee is, we understand that that the vision of that VP and he, he would have thought something. And though he has his army with him, with the expertise, but he is not really making use of uh, their expertise, right? He's just calling shots just because he's sitting there and he thinks that is the best. And I, according to me, I think that that person needs coaching first. And before we coach them, we need to understand that why is their, that vision for him? Why he thinks that this, this works for him, for the team? Right. Right, and for that, obviously, we need to have that conversation because the uh, coach, uh, the newly joined coach, that is my mentee, was intimidated just with the position, and because that was the perception that was given by the manager, so that uh, I mean, the co uh, the mentee did not even think of having a conversation with VP. So I told her that immediately, first thing that you need to do is. Either if you, first of all, you'll have to be courageous enough to go and speak. He is not going to bite you just because you are a junior, right? And everyone welcomes question. So you have to go there and speak to him. And I said, if you do not muster courage to uh, speaking to him, you all, you already have SPC, who is a senior person. Just go to that person. And uh, she mentioned that SPC is also frustrated. 
and I just told her that this is your opportunity. Go and speak to SPC. Understand his point of view that why he is frustrated in that environment. What is that all about? Seek his help. And you both can go and talk to your VP. Just ask him to lead the conversation if you don't muster, uh, if you do not have courage to talk yourself. Maybe have a conversation with him, understand his vision, and ask him questions that how can you help uh, him in his vision? Maybe those are the next steps for that uh, mentee to uh, take care. And then uh, coming to your um, the uh, working agreement, right? I'm not sure who asked this question, but this is a very, very important thing. I would share. Uh, I would like to share my experience of uh, missing the working agreement. So that was my like first assignment as an agile coach, and uh, I did not have uh, any working agreement in place. Though I knew, but I somehow missed it. So I directly started uh, having uh, coaching sessions without having that working agreement with the teams. And obviously, before jumping into the coaching, I did understand what the team is about and all those things. So under that account of engagement, they, they were like 17. And I was told I should be coaching, say, five teams. And I whatever was uh, told to me, okay, uh, this is the, these are the teams that you need to coach and these are the teams that uh, you need to help and all those things. I started with my coaching uh, assignment and whatever. So we were like two months down the line and I was asked question about other two teams who were not under under me or maybe I, I I was not coaching them those teams were not under my kitty so I was literally surprised I mean I when I had joined I was told that these were these are the five teams that you would be coaching now I'm asked about you don't see any improvement in these two teams but then I never coached them right so that's that's the point when I felt somewhere we should have agreed say maybe on a working agreement saying that these are the people I'm going to coach. These, these are the team members. These uh, would be my uh, responsibilities. And this is what we are going to expect. Right. And not only that, what happened was, I mean, that got me into frustration because it was my mistake that I did not agree upon the working agreement. I was given so many responsibilities, like taking care of deliverables. I was asked to update this, that, report, and so many things. I was baffled. I was like, this was never part of my uh, job, right? I'm, I'm not saying anything or I'm still doing that because I see that you need support. That's a different issue, but you cannot hold me accountable for something that I'm not uh, signed up for, right? So that is a, that was a learning for me that whenever you go to any project or maybe any team or any engagement, first thing that you should do is, sign up the working agreement with whoever coachy would be, right? It could be like teams or leadership or whoever. Have a working agreement. Understand your team, obviously, first, and then have a working agreement before you start your uh, coaching journey. Well, that was certainly very thorough. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it helped with a different perspective, the working agreement from your perspective. And then... Um, you know, I, I've just never seen like coaching agreements. Sometimes you have a coaching agreement be, between the person you're coaching. Um, so how feasible is that? I mean, do you have a, a generic coaching agreement for a team or all seven teams? And then that's communicated down from, uh, you know, leadership. Um, you know, how does that work? Yes. So, Ron, so I mean, if you can give a real quick response. Right. We got one more question. We'll try to fit it in, but yeah, go. Sure. Uh, yes, we could have a agreement to each team, right? Because not every team is similar or not the team dynamics are similar. You can have different, different agreements to with the different, different team. And also I prefer having one agreement uh, with the leadership as well. So now whenever I go to any, uh, any assignment or take up any assignment, I have a first agreement with my uh, leadership team or a management over there. Though it may not be a proper documented one, but we actually talk about it uh, before I take up that assignment, saying that these are the things I'm not going to do, these are the things I'm going to do, and this is what, uh, these are the things that you can expect. So yes, you can have different agreements uh, uh, with the different uh, teams. Okay, All thanks, right. time's up. Great, thank you. <laughs>
Thank you, Karen. Thanks, Karen. All right, lightning round, real quick, probably 30 seconds. Um, <laughs> let's see. And gosh, I had it. Maru asks, do you use or know of useful quick team or leadership surveys or assessments that help with analyzing the coaching needs for a team? Yes, definitely. So first thing that we can uh, have is maybe skip level survey that you can do for your leadership, right? You can ask your team members how uh, how is your leadership, what is their confidence level? And for the team, you can definitely have team health surveys, right? You have, uh, you can check what uh, what is, uh, how is your team in terms, of, in terms of many things, like right from skill set to morale to uh, say their uh, innovation to anything, right? Whatever you feel should be required for that team. Yes, and uh, obviously, you can have different different surveys. So in our organization, we, we have like 360 degree uh, survey uh, feedback. Like, uh, I mean, whenever you even join the new organization, you, you have like 180 days feedback or say 90 days feedback, 30 days feedback. Similarly, when you go to any uh, uh, project, you can have such uh, feedback or surveys for your team. All right, great. Well, Ramya, I assume that if anybody has any further questions, they can reach out to you and you can uh, you can dialogue there. So thank you so much for your time. This was an awesome session. Jamie's already included in the chat that she's going to be sharing the, um, we'll be sharing the recording as well as the slides from Ramya and the chat session as well, because y'all had a lot of wisdom that you shared in the chat. So Ramya, thank you very much, everyone. Appreciate you. you attending and have a great weekend. All right. Yep. Thank we'll you so you much, time. Mark and Jeremy, for this opportunity. Have a great Bye, rest. Of the day. Thank you, Ramya. Appreciate it. Thank you.